Um, so let's start. Um, it's going to be a brief presentation, but um, hopefully we'll cover the most important about the topic. So chikungunya is an arborvirus and that used to be endemic to West Africa that caused febrile polyarthralgia and arthritis. Um, interesting, the name chikungunya was derived from a local language of Tanz Tanzania, meaning that which bends up or bend over or uh, the stop walk because of the incapacitating excruciating arthralgia that is well known caused by, by the disease. Um, is primarily transmitted to humans through the bites of infected mosquitoes, predominantly Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. Um, Aedes aegypti is also known as a vector for dengue virus. Um, Bloodborne transmission is possible. Some cases has been reported among um, laboratory personnel handling infected blood from patients. Also, rare in, rare in utero transmission has also been reported, um, mostly during the second trimester. Intrapartum transmission is also possible um, if the mother is in the highly biremic during delivery. Um, it's not found in breast milk, so there are no reports of in infants acquiring chikungunya virus through breastfeeding and actually infected mothers are encouraged to breastfeed their babies. The risk of transmission is highest when the patient is biremic, usually during the first week of illness. So what are the clinical signs and symptoms? Well, the, um, is the three most common signs and symptoms are the incapacitating polyarthralgia, High s the sudden onset of high fever, typically um, higher than 102 Fahrenheit, and the maculopapular rash. The incubation period is typically three to seven days. Um, the acute symptoms, for the most part, will resolve between seven to 10 days. Um, it's well known to cause high fevers, um, same as dengue, but Typically, the fever will be a little bit higher, typically higher than 102 Fahrenheit. Um, severe polyarthralgia. The joint symptoms are typically bilateral and symmetric, is um, seen typically in the hands too. Can be severe and debilitating, so some patients will be bedridden for a while. It can cause headache, um, myalgia, to arthritis conjunctivitis, some GI symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and the maculopapular rash. Um, all right, so what laboratory findings we will see with this disease? Well, it's well known to cause lymphopenia, thrombocytopenia, however, it's not has, um, predominantly has dengue, elevated creatinine, and elevated hepatic transaminases. Some of the at atypical disease manifestations are uveitis, retinitis, nephritis, myocarditis, hemorrhage, but again, this is rare. It's not as dengue that is well known to co cause hemorrhage and shock. Craniate nerve pulses, Guillain-Barre syndrome, which I read in different sources, they always mention um, there are some cases reported with Guillain-Barre syndrome, meningoencephalitis, and bullous skin lesions. Um, these skin lesions are different from the common maculopapular rash. So this is um, two pictures of the common maculopapular rash. Uh, as you can see, it could be diffused, um, slightly ra raised, and um, it could be pruritic in some patients. So who can get chikungunya? Well, pretty much everybody can get chikungunya. Even celebrities can get chikungunya, right? So this is uh, a picture that Lindsay Lohan posted on Twitter before she started getting the onset of the symptoms. And then, well, her pictures didn't look that fabulous like this one. And that was actually last December. Um, what are the clinical outcomes? 
Like I mentioned before, most of the acute symptoms will resolve within seven to 10 days. Mortality is very rare. Um, some patients will require hospitalization, a low percentage, and your patients, um, your elderly patients with multiple medical comorbidities. Um, some patients, and actually um, a high percentage, will have relapse of their rheumatologic symptoms even months following the acute disease course. And there's um, multiple studies that report variable proportion of these relapsed rheumatologic symptoms. Sometimes they will be up to months and even years after the, um, the acute illness. All right. Persistent altralgia associated with chikungunya, chikungunya virus. Um, there was a study done of in Reunion Island with 88 patients they screened adult patients that had confirmed chikungunya, chikungunya virus by laboratory PCR. Um, the patients were assessed and followed for 18 months after the acute disease onset. 65% of them were hospitalized, which I thought it was pretty high. Um, al almost 64% reported persistent arthralgia, and their arthralgia was polyarticular in all the cases. And this was published in CID in 2008. So how can we diagnose chikungunya? There's a few um, different ways to do it. You can send culture for virus, um, the most common, and I think this is what we've been using with the local health department is the PCR. And there's also serology for IgM and neutralizing antibodies. For serology, you have to wait at least four days after the acute onset of the illness. Okay, what is the differential diagnosis for chikungunya? Well, this will um, depend on um, where the patient is located, travel history, etc. But we all know that dengue is very similar. Um, some other differential diagnoses are group A strep, Listospirosis, malaria, rickettsia, parvovirus, enterovirus, rubella, misles, adenovirus, post infectious arthritis, because of, of course um, chikungunya is well known to cause polyaltralgias, some rheumatoid conditions like RA, and even other alpha virus infections like Mayara, Rose River, Parma forest. So how can we distinguish chikungunya from dengue? Well, this is, uh, can be very difficult because there's, they um, share so many similarities. They're transmitted by the same vectors. They have similar clinical features, um, similar um, outcomes. Even the viruses can circulate in the same um, demographic area and cause even co-infections. Um, it is very important to rule out dengue has proper clinical management can improve the outcome. Why? Because um, some dengue patients can develop hemorrhage and shock. So it's very important to rule out dengue first and treat everybody as they have dengue until you rule it out. All right, so chikungunya versus dengue. Well, this is an, a Spanish graphic, but I'm gonna explain it to you. I thought it was very, very good. So we have on the right um, chikungunya and on the left dengue. And it's pretty much said um, the most common clinical features of each of them. So it said that chikungunya can give you um, sudden acute fever, usually typically higher than 102 Fahrenheit, conjunctivitis, joint pain, diffuse maculopapular rash, um, your GI symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diffuse back pain. And it can also cause some myalgias. On the other hand, dengue, which is of course similar, it can give you headache. Um, chikungunya can give you headache too, but it's not as prominent as dengue. Dengue is also when not well known to cause this retroorbital severe pain. I don't know if you ever heard of it. In Puerto Rico, I heard of it multiple times. It's like severe <coughs> pain behind their eyes. Um, more instead of polyaltralgias, they get more myalgias, abdominal pain, 
nausea and vomiting, and if it's hemorrhagic dengue, they can get severe abdominal pain and epistaxis, of course. So again, this is um, a table comparing chikungunya with dengue. And um, in both, you will see fever, but it's um, typically chikungunya, the Shara is with higher fever. Ultralgia is more common in chikungunya. Headache in both. Um, myalgia, more in dengue. Hemorrhage, you'll see it in dengue, and shock, you will see it in dengue. In terms of laboratory findings, um, chikungunya is well known to cause lymphopenia, but dengue can cause it too. Um, I thought it was interesting that dengue is, um, is common to cause neutropenia, and I don't know if you knew, but dengue can cause um, thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia, and in Puerto Rico, at least in the past, that's how they used to diagnose dengue, like with clinical symptoms, and they will run a CBC if the patient had thrombocytopenia, that's most likely it's dengue, et cetera. And dengue can cause hemoconcentration, um, and it's typically a, a bad sign of prognosis. Um, so how do you manage these patients? Well, first of all, you have to treat all of them like if they had dengue until you rule them, rule it out. As is for hydration and hemodynamic status, evaluate for other serious condition and treat accordingly. Um, of course, collect a specimen and send for testing. So the treatment, well, um, there's no specific antiviral therapy. Uh, treatment is mainly supportive, so pretty much rest, hydration, and Tylenol, right? Um, it is not recommended to, to the use of aspirin or NSAID, um, at least in the acute phase, until you rule out dengue. Um, the persistent joint can be, can be benefit eventually from NSAIDs, steroids, or even physiotherapy. Well, chikungunya is a national notifiable condition, and all suspected cases should be reported to the state or local health department. I didn't know that. Um, well, prevention um, is very important during when a patient um, is diagnosed with chikungunya. They have to be um, isolated for further mosquito bites during the first week because they can transmit the disease to um, another patient. My sister was diagnosed with chikungunya, so actually my niece was staying with my mom until the acute um, phase of the illness was resolved. Um, of course, the use of AC or uh, window screens, mosquito repellent, and tr try to empty a standing water source from outdoors containers. And of course, support your local vector control programs. So chikungunya virus in the Americas. Well, I didn't know that actually the first case of chikungunya was reported <coughs> in 2013 in America, before it was just in West Africa. So in December 2013, the first local transmission of chikungunya virus was reported in San Martin. Then later on, in April 2014, um, the first locally acquired cases of chikungunya were reported in Puerto Rico, followed by um, cases in U.S. Virgin Islands. Eventually, um, in July 2014, the first locally acquired case of chikungunya was reported in the continental U.S. and uh, specifically in Florida. This is a map um, representative of all the countries and territories with locally acquired chikungunya or imported cases from um, infected travelers. Um, there's actually um, a whole table of all the cases of chikungunya virus in America reported as of February 27 of this year. 
this is the latest that we have I thought these few um, countries were interesting just because of the proximity um, they has been 11 confirmed cases in USA um, more than 2,000 case imported cases in the Dominican Republic there has been above um, half million of suspected cases and 84 confirmed cases and of course I guess because of the lack of um, health care or you know having that uh, access to confirmatory testing in Puerto Rico there has been uh, more than 26,000 suspected cases and um, more than 4,000 confirmed cases um, and in San Martin um, impressively more than 800,000 suspected cases and these are my references <coughs> 